Oh, hey there. Yeah, welcome to Too Long It Didn't Read Finance Edition, where I'll be talking about some personal finance and trading with a little bit of a TLDR version up front. So stick around, like, subscribe, comment, and here we go. Hello and welcome back. We got the weekly update here for um, the trading and the plan, the journey. And uh, so thank you for, for returning and then keeping track and uh, everything with going on. Uh, I'm going to try to keep my head on the camera this time. I just built a standing desk and I'm really enjoying standing, but I also noticed that I kind of move around a little bit more. So um, we'll get right into it. So um, good news. We made some money last week. Uh, bad news. We could have made more money, of course. Um, and we only messed up the rules a little bit. Had some more SPX single trades because my other account wasn't set up yet uh, to keep them separate. But it is this week, so no more single options, SPX gambles. Not gambles. I feel like pretty confident in what I'm doing, and you'll see that later. Um, but, uh, yeah, we made some money. We took some more money out, of course, because I'm taking a little bit out each week um, to pay myself and to get used to that money coming out of the account. Um, and so, yeah, so we'll get right into it. Um, we changed our dates to obviously Monday this, the 11th and then till yesterday. Um, doesn't matter much there, but obviously there's no trading going on today um, with Martin Luther King. Um, so last week we did 29 orders with 33 fills because some of the orders were for multiple contracts. They didn't all fill at the same time. Um, we're going to skip the SPX trades. So I'm going to do a separate video on that because I want to go into um, the technicals of why I made those trades. Um, and cause I, I feel really confident and really good about the, the one big winner. Um, and I learned some things, um, and did some things I probably shouldn't have that I think you could learn from too. So, um, a couple of SPX trades, um, we had some, we did some management of, uh, IH, which is our oil play, um, Home Depot. We were able to roll that out a little bit too. Um, I had to change, just rolled out in price on this one. OIH is an iron condor, so it's got the two sides, right, high and low. So I can't necessarily. It's a little more difficult to move it out in time, um, and I didn't have to. I could get a credit by just moving the puts up because the calls are testing because OIH is going up for some reason dramatically. Um, Home Depot. I moved it out in time. I wanted some more time to be right in my call that it will be 277 and a half or less. But as you can see, I had to move the pricing because of time. So that date, March 19th, is the third or the monthly is what it's called in options. Um, every third Friday is known as the monthly. Um, a lot of the options I trade also have weeklies. Um, as you can see here, it says weekly. Um, but the monthlies don't always have every the same um, strike prices. So I had to modify not only out in time, but I did bring it in a little bit more um, for the credit there. So same spread, five points wide, got a little bit more. So my max loss has now come down. Um, and now I have out till March 6th, March 19th, excuse me, uh, which I believe is almost 60 days. Um, so plenty of time um, for that. So we'll see how that goes. XBI is another iron condor I've got on. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. XBI is a single spread, so just a call spread. Similar to Home Depot, I moved it out in time. Got some more time for that. Got a little bit of a credit, 7 bucks. Nothing right home about, but it is still getting paid um, for giving yourself more time, which is great. Uh, Amazon, I've got a iron condor on, and it's still doing all right. It's still sitting near the middle. Uh, or not near the middle, but uh, it's getting a little higher. Um I'm sorry, lower. Amazon's been falling. So I moved the call side down about 200 points. Um, and so I've just kind of narrowed, you know, normally my, let me see if I can get this, where my range is here. I just kind of brought it in a little bit or brought in the call side uh, to get some more credit here um, for about $1.09. Again, nothing crazy, but uh, still adding up. I think my Amazon credit now is getting close to six, seven dollars, but we'll check that out here in a minute. Um, Surrupted Therapeutics, uh, didn't break the rules technically, but trying something different here. Um, so as I said earlier, I had an iron condor on and it's a little tricky when you're having both sides to move it out in time. Um, but it is possible. You just have to have the extra capital to move the put spread and then move the call spread separately at transactions. So I got a little bit of a credit on the call side, 
Um, I'm still waiting to get any sort of credit on the put side to move it out. Um, if it doesn't happen um, around the open tomorrow, then I'm just going to close the whole thing out and uh, and take the loss because that's the one that uh, fell 50% overnight due to some bad news on uh, one of the drug tests that it's, that it's doing. So trying to, to band-aid that one up, but uh, worst case, uh, not a big deal. Uh, that's that's part of the game. We're only shooting to win about 70% of the time, so 30% of the time we're losing. SPX again, I, we'll talk about those another time. Baidu, we did, we have a call spread on that. Gave myself more time, just like Home Depot. Uh, moved it out about three more weeks. Got a little credit, 20 bucks. Um, nothing crazy, but that's what management is. Just giving yourself more time, getting paid to do it. TSM was one of the earnings plays this week. Uh, Taiwan Semiconductors. Um, so I did a uh, 120 iron fly with some wings at 126 114 so i had a six point spread higher or lower i expected taiwan semiconductors tsm to go up or down six dollars or less um and so i'll show you the chart uh here after we get done with the trades just to show you kind of what it did uh, i did make some money on that i got a 370 credit and i only had to buy back for 325 so made a little bit um could have been a little bit more but i'm pretty happy with that trade as i'll show you here in a minute um, so that's closing out the trade the next morning, some more SPX trades, finally closed out one of my core positions on RUT or the Russell 2000 index, um, modified my order. I had it set at 30. Um, it was hovering around 35. I said close enough for me. Um, no sense waiting um, a couple of days just for those extra pennies. Close it out, reset it, moving on. Uh, City Group or City Bank was another earnings trade this week. Could have gone a little better, um, but the, all the banks uh, didn't do well. So, um, and this missed its uh, revenue and sales projections. So, um, fell pretty hard. I'll show you a chart of that here as well. Could have gotten out for a little bit better, um, around 205, 210, but I got out near where I think the ideal would have been. So that's good enough for me, um, even though the 300 bucks uh, and 350 loss uh, definitely stings a little bit, but um, that's part of the game. Zoom, uh, we did some modifications to our iron condor. We rolled our puts up. So unlike Amazon, Zoom is continuing to go up. So our call side stays, our put side slowly getting closer. Um, and I think we've got over $7 of credit received on a 10, you know, thousand point spread, 10 point spread. So I got 700, I got paid $700, max risk $1,000. So I've got a 300 ish potential loss still remaining. Um, but I still have the trade on. There's still some time, February 5th, um, and it, so it could easily drop a few points, come right in the middle, close out for a profit, call it a day, and walk away. So, um, so Repta, later in the week, we did some more modifications. This is the uh, call side, like I said. So earlier we had um, some calls. I rolled them down uh, a little bit, and then I rolled them out is what I'm doing here. So now we've got more time. So now I've also got a put uh, put order on that I'm trying to roll it out to that same March 19th week as well, so I can reset an iron condor. Again, not very common. Um, it is possible. Usually, it's just um, not very probable because most people don't have the extra um, capital to do so because it does require you're basically setting two separate, you're breaking one trade apart into two separate trades, so it's taking up more buying power than usual. Um, so, but again, trying something new here. Um, it's definitely going to be a, a lesson on my journal um, of how this goes, but uh, we'll see. So, and then I had some new trades for the week. I added uh, Carvana. Uh, I had a call spread on it um, from my um, last week. I showed you the scan that I do for implied volatility increases. Um, I like Carvana because it was getting away from tech a little bit. Um, it's at least a different industry. Um, Beyond Meat, again, um, from the IV thing or from the IV scan different industry. Um, I needed some puts. So I needed some long deltas. My portfolio was getting a little too short. Um, and I'll show you here in a second. And then Corsair, a good friend of mine mentioned it. Um, and I read a couple articles that he sent. I liked it. Um, did a little baby trade to get started. Five point put spread. Good credit. Um, and so we'll see from there. Um, and then Umbrella Corp. Um, again, just from the IV scan. I know they're in therapeutics maybe. Um, what is their industry? 
semiconductors, excuse me. So um, they're in semiconductors. I didn't have it. It is still tech based, but a little bit different, a little more on the hardware side than the software stuff. So, um, so back over here, um, this has changed last week um, due to the Baidu adding and the Corsair. Those are all positive deltas. Um, so this was shooting around minus 12. So it's quite bearish. So minus means I want the market to go down. Positive means I want it to go up. Um, I usually, I want to stay within a handful of points, three to five points, um, ideally negative because markets crash down, they don't crash up. Um, so just to have that little bit of protection um, in case some some big drop does happen, um, it's, it's a little less bad uh, for me. Um, so I was getting a little too far, I was up to minus 12. So I did some more, um, was looking specifically via the scan uh, which of course isn't working today because the market's not open, but I had a bunch of choices. Um, and so I was looking for things that were in different industries than what I have, as well as some trades that could be more, um, that were looking to go up from there so that I could get sell put spreads and get some of those positive deltas back in my portfolio. Um, for the most part, everything else is sitting nicely. Uh, Baba is 242. I need to stay above 210. So that's good. Uh, I'm trying to close. Oh, and it's like crashing on me. There we go. Oh, real slow today. So we may not do this here. There we go. Um, the puts on the SPY are looking pretty good. Those should close this week. Um, Pinduo Duo doing great. Um, C Limited being a little bit of a problem child. Trying to roll this out still um, to next week, but it really just kind of took off. Uh, was at a high of, I think, 2.30 last week, and uh, that was my max loss. But uh, because of the time, it didn't hit my max loss target, so that's why I'm still in it. Um, I am trying to roll it out. Hopefully tomorrow, the volatility right at the open will let me get uh, get it moved out for a small credit of a penny or, or two. Sarepta, the problem child, is currently sitting at 91. Um, hoping over the next 18, potentially 60 days, it comes up a little bit to the 120 area so we can get out for a small win or at least a smaller loss. Zoom, like I said, it's getting close to our high side, but not there yet. It's 384. I just rolled up the put side. So we got a nice big credit of 718. So max loss, worst case right now, I lose 200 and is that $82? $72. No, $82. Um, so not that bad considering um, for sure so I'm very happy with that if that were to happen I think it's gonna come down and, uh, and make us some money now right now it's sitting at 780 I'm trying to wait till about five or six dollars um, because I think it'll stay there or drop back a little bit and we'll be good to go um, Amazon sitting still falling a little bit hovering around 31 so we're getting real close to our down our put side um, not the end of the world. We could still roll this calls down again, um, but it's been slowly sl falling here for a couple days now. So very unlike Amazon. So I'm, I'm expecting a pop, uh, but we'll see. Uh, the semiconductors, just put those on, just put that on. Oh my God. Um, and then Citigroup. Oh, this was the, I'm trying to sell some actually. So. Um, I'm also working on back testing um, that's shown pretty good um, uh, probability that after a, a rather dramatic drop, um, which Citigroup did, um, if you sell puts, um, usually the market will kind of help you by, you know, people are seeing value or a deal because now something's much cheaper than it was um, and they still like the fundamentals. So they go in and buy it up and kind of hold that level and uh, I can make a quick dollar on the rebound for that on city. So that's what we're trying to do there. Corsair, FXI, our China piece. We're looking for it to stay around 47. It's around 48, looking real good. Um, that should be closing out here, maybe later this week, uh, if not early next week, just because we got some time, 32 days, still a while. Um, so our oil play, uh, sitting at 178. So right near our call side, we did roll up the puts, but uh, so that's looking nice, especially if it comes down about another Five ten dollars this week. That'd be that'd be real good. TLT long term bonds. These have been all over the place with the the administration and Biden situation. Um, they fell quite a bit actually. So we're looking to, for it to stay right around the 157. This is an iron fly. 
So I want it to really stay. I sold two on both sides, so I want it to stay in the middle. Um, but it can move a little bit up or down um, for it. So I'm expecting that to come back a little bit. Buy do calls. I rolled these out 245s, currently sitting at 238. So that's good. We just wanted to continue falling. Um, the Asian ADRs, Chinese ADRs have really been taken off um, because of, I'm assuming Biden is now, you know, bringing back um, negotiations now with China. And so everybody's piling into those. Looking to reset my Russell 2000 core position. Home Depot, as I said earlier, I rolled it out. So we got some time now sitting at 275. We want that to drop um, eh, 10, $15 or just sit there right at 275 for the next couple weeks. And that would be perfect. Um, and then XBI finally to wrap it up. Uh, 155 call, it's at 151. So we just want that to come down a couple bucks um, or stay right about there for the next couple weeks. But, um, you know, it's been rallying pretty good. So I'm expecting some sort of stumble um, just because I like to think of the market as, as a human, as, as a marathon runner, right? They can't run forever. They usually got to take a break or they got to slow down. There's a different pace. Um, you know, they got to breathe. So on that breath while they're taking, you know, the, the time, usually on the markets or on the charts, there'll be a little stumble, you know, a little down move before the big next pickup move. So um, we'll see. Um, and finally, I'll show you the earnings. So we had TSM. There is too much going on here. All right. So ignore all this stuff on the bottom for now. So we had earnings here. Um, and I'd usually do them right around the close. So 119, we had the 119 spread. And so I wanted it to open right about here. Obviously, it did not. Um, however, uh, it looked to be um, potentially opening down. Did we miss earnings? I believe we missed sales on this one. Yeah. Right? Checking the news real quick. Yeah, we missed sales. So I expected, because we missed sales, I expected at least some sort of dip. So even though we were up, uh, and again, we had six points on this. So we were at 119. I was trying to stay below 125. Um, but I only took in 370 in credit. So in order for me to make money on the trade, I need it to be 370 or less over the 119 number. So it opened right around 123. We were looking for 122.70 um, or less to make money to close out the trade. Again, I thought they were going to miss it. Um, drop a little bit because they missed earnings. However, it's you know a semiconductor play, so who knows? And um, got real lucky on the first couple of minutes here with this down bar. Got out right about here, about two three minutes in, um, for a little win. Uh, I think I closed it at 325 out of 370 on a couple contracts. I made about 150 bucks, um, but not bad for a couple um, couple minutes. And then of course, as you see here, it just took off. So. Um, even more excited about the small win because it could have been a max loss of uh, eight, nine hundred bucks, um, give or take. So um, very happy with that trade and that play there. Um, I think we had another earnings play this week, didn't we? That was last week. Okay. Um, and then we had Citigroup. So Citi closed another AM earnings play, which are always a little trickier. I prefer the PMs. Um, cause it just gives it more time to kind of fade out and come back, but we're right around the 69 for the close. So we sold the 69 piece. This one also had about a $6 spread. So $6 up or down, uh, is where we wanted it to be. Ideally opening as close to 690 as possible. Um, they missed sales. They beat earnings estimate, the EPS. Um, but then also all the other banks. Um, didn't do really well, especially Wells Fargo. So it kind of brought the whole industry down, as you can see here with these these marks here, or these candles. But uh, opened up right about here. Uh, so as you see, it's about a dollar eighty off. Um, we only got in for about a dollar eighty-five. So with the volatility, it's going to be really tricky to get out for any sort of profit. Um, I probably should have. I left it like a penny below my credit just to make break even or make any, you know, a dollar on this, what I probably should have done. Um, 
not necessarily in hindsight either, but like the news just wasn't that good. So I probably should have raised it above and done like a 205 instead of 184, I think was the order originally. Um, and just taken a small loss. That way I could have gotten out at 205, which I think would have been uh, definitely doable. 2010, absolutely. Uh, or 210, wow. Um, and then save myself on eight contracts, getting out at 210 versus 235. 25 bucks times eight, 200 bucks, right? So that would have been. Um, it doesn't seem like much, but it adds up, right? So over, I did five, 600 of these trades last week, last year. Um, if not more, I'm kind of pulling that one out, but I know it was a couple hundred. Um, so a couple hundred over a hundred bucks a piece, right? That all adds up for it. So, um, and then as you can see, it just really didn't recover, um, from there and even went lower. So it would have been a max loss. So happy to get out for just 300 bucks, um, loss on that instead of seven, 800 again for it. But um so that's it for the update um account is like i said profitable this week we're only down 1360 instead of 1685 um so slowly making our way um the earnings play didn't help obviously city um took about 350 bucks away from us so that could have been a much better number um, but the spx trades again i'm going to do a, another video here shortly um, to go through those in more detail because some of the charting on those i think is really good to show you uh, a bit more of kind of what's going on in here um, and the style of trading that that I'm doing on some of the trading. Again, all that trading is going to be moved to a separate account just to make sure I don't mess with uh, the returns and the stats on the, the main trading account here, but um, that'll be fun. So uh, that's it for now. And uh, thanks for watching. And of course, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, if you want to see some more stuff about different aspects of trading or me to, for, to dive in more about something I mentioned today briefly, um, by all means, leave a comment. And uh, thank you again for uh, stopping by.